just for the for the microphone. If I would have a, a real microphone, I would have, have danced on the on the table, of course. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for finding the way here after the break. My name is Andre Radon. I'm in charge uh, at IT in Volkswagen for what we call innovation. You will understand uh, in the next 15 minutes a little bit better uh, what we are talking about. And I need to take that one. And f first of all, I would like to introduce a little bit Volkswagen. I would assume you know it quite well. I don't know how many of you know uh, that companies like Porsche or Bentley or Bugatti or Lamborghini uh, belong to the Volkswagen Group. And uh, so we work uh, for all of them. Uh, maybe one number I would like to pick out. Uh, we sold last year 10 million cars. Sounds quite a lot. More, the, the, another number impresses me a little bit more. We, we, we produce every day 45,000 cars. That's if you divide those 10 million cars, it's 45,000 cars a day. If you just imagine this parking lot full of cars, I think that makes it a little bit more tangible and to feel. Having said that, all I said is a little bit old school, you know. Car manufacturers talk about how many cars they sold, where they sold them, which markets are uh, covered, and so on. But imagine I come back at, in the year 2030, then I'm something like, what I am, 67, something like that. Okay, and I'm not so sure what I present then. Maybe I present very proud that we sold the first billion miles of mobility. Maybe I talk about very nice services we are selling, giving you free energy at home if you take our our cars or whatever. Uh, maybe I introduced that we just invented the real Beamer, which brings you whatever place uh, you want to be on this planet in a millisecond. I don't know, okay? And what I know is the world is gonna change and it's uh, gonna change dram dramatically and pretty fast. I think AWA shows that pretty much. If you look on what the curve is, uh, uh, Ori showed this morning how people are interested in the AR space, we see the world is changing pretty fast. Facing the reality, if you work at the, at the automotive OEM today, lots of things are really focused on the mechanics of a car, it needs to have a nice styling, the body in white needs to be produced very smooth and so on. At the end of the day, if you think of shared mobility, for instance, and you push a button and the car is in front of your house, maybe you don't care anymore so much on what kind of car is in front of you. Maybe for your wedding party, you consider something to have a special car, but usually to get from A to B, you don't really care anymore. I'm, I'm pretty convinced on that. And so we are exactly in that conflict between the old way of thinking and the new way of thinking and the, the automotive industry is really in a, in a revolution in the next, I would say, two to five years. Uh, that's going to change very, very much. So software as, as general is the differentiating factor in the car right now. Okay? Uh, so we started to look on those trends. We have uh, defined for something like 12 major trends. Uh, a couple of, of years ago, actually, we started with all this big data hype four years ago with a data lab in Munich where we have 70 data analysts who take benefit out of all kinds of data uh, you could find of, or we, we just released in March the first uh, quantum computer uh, uh, solution there where we uh, actively interact in the traffic in Beijing and just by controlling the taxis of Beijing, driving the taxis in a different route, we can actively influence the traffic in, in Beijing, for instance. Or we have labs which really focus on robotics, IoT, all this uh, uh, kind of stuff, what we call the smart production lab, and so on. But to, today we are here to talk about uh, augmented reality, and there we have three major legs which really uh, go after that. One, the code lab is pretty close uh, to here in San Francisco, and there we really focus on what services can we uh, uh, build on the data we have from the cars. 
or also what is our digital innovation strategy, a little bit what Germans call the silicon way of thinking, okay? Then we have, and Jan comes from there, at the center of competence for augmented virtual reality at Audi, so where we really look on innovative solutions for our internal processes, but also uh, how we can help our customers there. And then we have a third leg, which is the, the virtual engineering lab, uh, where we really focus on, let's say, digitize our engineering process in-house. And there I would like to show you the first three use cases we did in the last year as part of the early adapter program of the, uh, of the Microsoft HoloLens. And uh, I'll start the movie here. We want to show how a designer or stylist can still draw in 2D on a monitor and then drag that 2D drawing directly onto the clay model. This allows them to skip the current step of having to print it, cut it, and glue it onto the model. This idea is focused on two engineers reviewing an engine build plan. They see there are two parts colliding with each other and go in for a closer look. After deciding what to do, an engineer leaves a voice note so it can be fixed before final assembly. The shape of a car greatly influences aerodynamics. This can create a gap between engineering and styling teams. Loading pre-baked simulations directly on top of physical prototypes is a great way to expose design challenges. Also, being able to drag and drop holographic models onto a remote collaborator is an efficient way to transfer content. The last scenario shows a unique use case for HoloLens and Volkswagen. After receiving the latest car design, a stylist is able to apply a new visual treatment. Then using HoloLens, they place the car on the street outside for quick iteration. This provides a better understanding of how the creation will look in the real world. Okay, this were the the Microsoft HoloLens uh, uh, use cases as we did them uh, last year. They have developed, uh, uh, developed further. Uh, you can visit us at our booth, 127 at Hall B. Uh, Jan just told me there are already people queuing, but just come by, we can show you a little bit more what we are doing there. But there are also other uh, use cases and uh, how they look like today. Uh, so we, we can take cars which don't even exist and can experience those cars. We can look at uh, the, the aerodynamics inside the car. We can look on the, the, the airflow uh, in the car. We can check uh, the aerodynamics outside the car. What is always a challenge, it's performance, I would say. You know, we have something like 30 million polygons there, and a Hula lens is kind of a separate computer and you need to deal with, with those data mass on those, uh, on those systems. Also, you need to have the, the real resolution and get the, the cars uh, uh, viewed in real time. So that's basically done on, on Unity. Another use case we have is like the crash test, uh, where we have to bring together old simulation uh, systems with uh, high visualization. And here the very nice thing is just imagine you can stick your hand into the car and check, okay, when does the airbag really open? Are there parts already coming inside the car before the airbag is open? Do we have to adjust something and so on? So that's a, a very interesting use case. Okay, last use case I would like to talk today to leave some time to, you, to Jan and we are, we are good. Okay, what we are working right now so far, what we can, can do is really represent the car, try can we reach everywhere and, and, and check if we have collisions between parts and stuff like that. What we are working right now on is that we bring the virtual experience car, I would probably translate it, where you really can go and uh, prove like the, your central navigation system, what is the best HMI there, what would be the best menus and so on in the virtual world without having any hardware being created. With that, Jan, I left you the five minutes. Okay, that's perfect, great. So, my name is Jan, I am coordinating all the stuff around augmented and virtual reality at the Center of Competence at Audi. And um, yeah, I want to present some uh, use cases next to the development of the product. So, having a look at the service world, um, we try to find out how we can support our technicians and the quality assurance so let's watch the video. 
The future of Audi after sales using HoloLens will give maintenance teams the advantage of being able to work hands-free and information-rich as they perform each customized task list. HoloLens offers a higher quality service with unique features such as customer car setup reminders or recording the condition of the bodywork without the need for a camera phone or laptop. In fact, servicing vehicles with HoloLens offers unique ways to record and analyze data, including detailed alerts about changes to current procedure. Service engineers can view technical information in context, such as the correct tire pressure required. This exchange of data will even allow live customer updates. This detailed data handling will improve the efficiency of maintenance tasks by giving the technician an easy, hands-free way to request and record information throughout the process. In the HoloLens repair scenario, all these advantages will also save time and create a more effective experience for the technicians. Gathering parts and choosing the right tools will become more efficient and error-free. All this new data can then be leveraged to offer new levels of support, such as live inquiries and detailed feedback, giving Audi teams a huge advantage. This will also become an essential part of the support team's ability to find issue trends and solve problems as and when they appear. Mixed reality in HoloLens is in scale with the real world, offering a natural way to interact and share knowledge. By offering information in context, the engineer is placed in a data-rich environment. All these features will give Audi technicians a real time-saving advantage, as well as motivating them in new and unique ways. So, this is just an impression of uh, yeah, use cases we want to get out of this technology. Another interesting aspect is uh, the question, how do we interact in uh, virtual worlds? How to establish communication in an easy manner? And our capturing for HMD project um, yeah, implements such a solution, um, just uh, bringing um, a photorealistic model of a person into the virtual world uh, using a simple uh, sensor technology. So, um, due to we run out of time very soon, uh, I just stop here and uh, think, okay, we gave us, uh, gave you an uh, um, overview of how we are using uh, the technology um, from an automotive perspective. But for all, there is a challenge. Have a look at this image there. What does screw mean? So, it depends on the context which information would be of help. And that's the challenge. We use the state-of-the-art technologies, virtual reality, augmented reality, machine learning, artificial intelligence, to solve this challenge and bridge the gap between the information and the recipient. So um, that's not our only challenge working on the delivery of the right information right in time. We are working on the topics of the future. Andre gave us an uh, impression uh, what topics are relevant uh, for us as an automotive manufacturer. And um, yeah, to work on the topics of the future, we need creative people, great ideas, and a new thinking. If you want to join us for this trip, step by at our booth at the exhibition area. Thank you very much. Thank you. As, ex as expected, uh, Lou, yep. as expected, you have a few questions. Do you want to pick uh, one of those? Yeah, I just I just picked the first one. Uh, to be honest, this uh, showcased uh, use or these use cases uh, from today are not really implementing AI or uh, machine learning, um, but we are working on these topics um, to um, get uh, the challenge done. Maybe maybe I add a little bit. Uh, there is one first implementation of AI, at least in the, in, in form of a chatbot. If you go to Volkswagen uh, connected car, you will find a chatbot which helps you how to register, how to use, and so on. But there are the first little plans. 
There you go. It's 15 Out minutes. of time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kevin, wherever you are, I suggest grab these guys or reach out and answer your questions. I think there's some great questions. <laughs>